Okay, equity financing. Now, what I spoke about previously with equity financing was what you need to to interest equity investors in investing in your business. What you need to present to them, the format that you need to present it in. So now what I'm going to speak about or what we're discussing here is what you need to finalize the equity investment. You need a business plan. Makes a lot of sense. They need to know it's 20 to 30 pages typically, sometimes as, as little as 15. Uh, no more than 30, please. They need to know exactly what it is you intend to do and how you intend to do it. Not that everything will play, play out exactly as it is in your business plan, but if you think in advance, you are much more able to be flexible and adjust as the market changes or you get other information back from the industry or your assumptions turn out to be erroneous or whatever. But if you have all of that in your business plan, again, you are e it's easier for you to kind of go with the shocks as opposed to end up imploding as a result of shocks. So they'll need five years of projections because remember they're talking about three to seven years um, holding period and the average is around five years. So they want five years of projections. And again, equity investors are going on, are investing at which you are today, but they're really focused on appreciation. Whereas banks, they just want to get this flat interest rate. But equity and equity investors are trying to get a 40% return. And so a lot of it has to do with how you intend to run the business or what the business will do over the next five years. Then they need historical financial statements for the past three years. And they want audited and reviewed. If you are seeking private equity or mezzanine financing, then you need reviewed financials, preferably audited but definitely reviewed. If you're seeking angel or venture capital, lots of times it's okay to not have that because you're an earlier stage company. It's okay to have compiled and tax returns. They'll need contracts, agreements, and other due diligence requested I items. And again, they'll need an explanation of any negative business or personal items. So if you had a business before and it failed and you had to declare personal or business bankruptcy, that's okay because you, you learn from your experiences, but you have to put that in there and talk about what it is you learned. Just briefly, or just a little paragraph. It doesn't have to be a whole write-up. You don't want to sound like you're defensive. You just want to say what happened, put it out there, and talk about how you're better for it or how the company is better for it. So an abbreviated business plan contains a number of components and people have their different uh, they're different monikers or titles or section heads that they like to use. These are mine. But essentially you can go online and find business plan templates. You can use business plan software. That's why I wanted to take you from a top down view. Because you can, I've had people tell me that they can find these business plans and write to them, but they have difficulty actually completing it because they don't understand their audience. They don't really understand what needs to go in there. They're so busy working in their business. They don't really understand their business from a 100-foot strategic view like they need to. So, again, hence the overview. Okay. You need a, to provide an overview, a company overview and business description, and that's the type of company, your location, the industry you're in and your overall sales. You need a description of your product and services. That's what does your company provide. And then you need a market overview and opportunity. The industry and the market background. What's going on in your industry and market that makes your business interesting? Is there consolidation and you're trying to raise money to buy other firms? Is there, uh, is this a newer technology and it's ready to, the industry is poised to grow from 2 billion to 20 billion in the next 5 or 10 years and you, you're going to play a part of that, a part in that. Just make sure that whatever the opportunity is, you convey it here. 
What are the competitive advantages? What makes you stand out from your competitors? If you are only focused on low cost, unless you're a Walmart and you have significant volume, you have excellent supplier relationships, you have stellar quality and so on that can allow you to drive your prices lower and lower and also drive your costs lower, you you do not wish to, unless you can do all of that, you do not wish to compete on price. A lot of the companies that went out of business during the recession competed on price and price alone. That is not how you provide value to your customers. Your customers look at overall value. Price is one component of overall value. It is not the only component, component and it is not the most important component most of the time. Strategy. What will you accomplish when and how will you accomplish it? And again, management. You need the management team bios and the advisory board. If you do not have a management team, if the management team just consists of you, get an advisory board. At least have two members of, of your on your advisory board and include that in the business plan. Also say that you intend to hire for let's say the position of COO or the position of CTO if you're a, um, an IT company or something but just make sure that you let them know that you are aware that your management team is short and what steps you are taking communicate the steps that you are taking to shore up that management team then you have investment or financing considerations and this is information pertinent to lenders or investors and you have a su summary of financial information and financial analysis. That is a snapshot of financials including customer concentration. And customer concentration is very important because if you obtain 60% of your sales from one customer, there's extreme customer risk and any investor is going to balk because if something they invest in your company or even a lender, if they lend to your company and the customer decides to go elsewhere, then your sales are going to plummet by 60%. So including customer concentration in this section is very, very important. What does your top customer, what percentage of business does your top customer provide? Or what percentage of net income? Because sometimes you can have one customer that only provides 20% of the business, but that provides 40% of the profit. And... So what's the top one, what's the top three, what's the top five, and what's your impact on your overall um, revenues and profits? And then your sources and uses of funds, if you're seeking bank financing or the type of proposed financing if you're seeking equity investment. You may say you intend to get a, a, a say you're doing an acquisition, you may intend to use mezzanine financing, private equity financing and a and a bank loan for a line of credit that's you would include all of that in your proposed financing and say approximately which amounts are which for additional information check out my book solving the capital equation financing solutions for small businesses available on Amazon or you can get the ebook which includes email consulting and a number of other bonuses at www.cashforimpact.com. The ebook is Help. I need money for my business now. And I'm Tiffany C. Wright. Thank you very much. You can follow my blog at blog.smallbusinessgrowthcapital.com. It's the Small Business Finance Forum. I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you.